Hi everyone, welcome back to another Biomed Basics video. Today, we're gonna finish off the last video in the patient monitoring series with ECG. ECG, which is electrocardiogram, or EKG, if you follow the German spelling, is a non-invasive graphical representation of the electrical properties of the heart. ECGs can be used to monitor a patient's condition or it can be used to diagnose underlying health conditions like heart arrhythmias, congested arteries, heart palpitations, or even a heart attack. Since an ECG is a measurement of the heart's electrical functions, let's take a look at how those functions occur. First off, heart tissue at rest is naturally polarized, which means that there's a difference of potential between the inside and the outside of the heart tissue cells. As the heart muscle is stimulated, sodium and calcium are allowed to enter the cell and this causes a rapid depolarization which creates a muscle contraction. The change between polarization and depolarization is called an action potential. An ECG trace is a map of the various action potentials throughout the cycle of a heartbeat. Now the difference between a heartbeat and a typical muscle contraction is that a typical muscle contraction is controlled by your nervous system but your heart creates its own beat. The heartbeat starts with an action potential from the SA node in the right atria. The SA node is a natural pacemaker for the heart and it sends a signal which spreads across both atria causing muscle cells to depolarize and contract. This is reflected by the P wave. There's a flat line following the P wave called the PQ segment, which is the signal entering the AV node. The pause after the P wave allows both the atria to pump their entire volume of blood before the signal leaves the AV node, entering into the bundle of hiss, down the bundle branches and into the ventricular walls. The ventricles then depolarize and contract which is represented by the QRS segment. At this time, the atria are both repolarizing, which is relaxing, but that signal doesn't show up on the ECG trace because of the overbearing QRS signal. The T wave is the repolarization of the large ventricles as they relax, which then starts the process all over again for the next heartbeat. That is the electrical function of a heart in a nutshell. Let's take a look at how we acquire those signals and how they're used to treat or diagnose patients. In order to collect and monitor the electrical signals of the heart, we need to use electrodes. Some electrodes are reusable but require extra user maintenance to ensure optimum signal quality, but a vast majority of electrodes that are used today are single-use disposables. There's three main configurations for detecting an ECG. Three lead, five lead, and 12 lead, although two leads can be used to acquire a signal, like on a defibrillator when you're using both the paddles. Three lead is the most basic configuration where two electrodes are used to detect and one electrode is used as a reference signal. These are the standard leads one, leads two, and leads three. These three options are part of something called Eindhoven's triangle. William Eindhoven theorized this triangle of leads in the late 1800s from the right arm to the left arm to the left leg, he used a string galvanometer, which is the first generation of ECG machine. The five lead configuration uses right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg, and V1. The 12 lead configuration uses all 10 electrodes, right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg, and V1 through V6, and there's two leads that are augmented, giving you 12 leads. More electrodes on a patient give medical providers options for viewing different electrical cross-sections of the heart, which greatly assist with the diagnosis. As I said before, there's reusable electrodes and disposable electrodes, disposable being the most common. A disposable electrode has an outer adhesive which surrounds a conductive gel center. The lead wire connects using a gator clip or a snap, and that lead wire connects to an acquisition module which collects all the analog waves and converts them to a digital signal for the ECG to interpret. Acquisition modules also have a separate function. 
They act as an isolator between the patient and the ECG computer, which protects the patient from possible leakage currents, and it preserves the electrical integrity of the patient's ECG signal. ECGs often have internal batteries which need to be tested and maintained, printers which need to be tested for timing and clarity, communication capabilities that need to be tested for data transfer to the hospital network, and the acquisition module with lead wires which need to be tested for signal strength and clarity. The most common issue with all ECGs is poor skin prep, which creates artifact and noise on the patient's ECG readout. Geriatric patients and patients with skin disorders are especially problematic for getting a clean, error-free ECG. Before an electrode is placed, the skin needs to be hair-free, then cleaned with an alcohol prep wipe. Next, the skin is roughed up with a small abrasive pad to access past the outer dermis layer. Now the skin is ready for the electrode to be placed. If someone claims to be receiving artifact on their ECG, test the system with either the lead wires that were connected to the patient or tested with a brand new set of wires. Set your patient simulator to 60 or 80 beats per minute. Examine the waves that are displayed on the patient monitor. If the signals are clear and constant, instruct the users to form proper skin prep on the patient, reapply the electrodes, and use the cables that you just verified on your analyzer. If the signal is not clear, then the problem is obviously in the acquisition module or the ECG itself, to which equipment replacement or repair is recommended. That's all I've got on this Biomed Basics ECG video. If you'd like to study leads configurations or ECG interpretations further, YouTube has a wealth of knowledge covering every aspect of ECG monitoring in great detail, often taught by doctors themselves. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. If you like these types of videos, please give me a thumbs up and hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when I release more videos on BMET careers or medical technology. Thanks again for watching, guys.